Hello and welcome to my video. Today I want to show you how to create those cute uh, Christmas gift tags inside the Silhouette Studio. And we will be starting from my sticker sheet, which you can get on my Etsy shop, which is on the address cuteandglued.etsy.com. And not only you can get those as a physical stickers, but you can also get those as a digital download file in the form of the Silhouette Studio project. So you can open this project in the Silhouette Studio and print it and cut it on your own if that's what you want. Of course, as you will see today, you can do a lot of different stuff with those drawings. So let's get started. The first things first, I'm using the free version of the Silhouette Studio application. If I open the about page, it's called the Silhouette Studio Basic Edition and you don't have to pay anything for this version. And as you will see today, it will be more than enough for our creations. So again, I will be starting with the sticker sheet from my Etsy shop, which are called Cute Pink Christmas. And I will try to turn those into the gift tags. So the first thing I will do is I will select the selection tool and I will select everything and move it to the side because I will most likely rearrange everything. And I want to somehow set the size of the of the tag. Now, if you are starting with your own design, maybe in the very new document, most likely you will not get those registration marks and the background color. So the way you do it is inside the page panel page setup, there is this registration marks tab where you have to set the type one because we want to print it and cut it afterwards. And usually what I would do is I would lower the inset and the length so I have more space for the stickers or for the content inside. As for the background, I'm using a simple trick where I set the grid to be as small as possible and the lines are so close to each other that it almost looks like there is a background color set. And of course then set the background color in here. If I turn off the grid, turn off the short grid, you will see we see the blank or white page. So I will show the grid again. And the last thing I want to check is make sure that the size of the paper matches the size of your paper. That's usually if you are in the US letter or if you are living in the Europe, that will be the size A4. I will keep it for two letter for now. So with all that said, we can get started. I will most likely start with the rectangle tool. So I will select the rectangle tool and I will draw the rectangle in a way that I can fit at least you know two columns next to each other so maybe make it a little bit smaller and I can quickly try to duplicate this one to see if both fits so if they both fit I can try to resize a little bit bigger like so then delete one of those and for the height I will probably go with around this size okay this seems to be fine what I want to do is have this kind of skewed corners on the left side and I can do this in a few different ways probably easiest one is to draw another rectangle just a little bit bigger and rotate it by 45 degrees. I can do this by dragging this green handle and pressing the shift key on my keyboard and it should snap to 45. But just to be sure, I will open the transformation dialog, which is this one and just open the rotation or rotate and make sure that it's set either to 180 or 45. I will duplicate this by either clicking the control C and control V on my keyboard, dragging it with, with the Alt key pressed or just pressing this duplicate button and rotate it to minus, oh, I'm sorry, 45 degrees, like so, which should abate in a minute. Okay, then what I will do is I will move it like so, and for those two, I will make sure they are aligned on the left side. So open the transformation pane, which is this one, open the alignment or align and set those two to be aligned to the left side, and then align, then select all three rectangles and set the vertical spacing to be even, like so. Now what we can do is we can move this main rectangle to the left or right side to set the shape of the left side. Because in a minute or in a while we will actually subtract those two big rectangles from the smaller one. So what I would like to do is I would like to make it like so that there is a little bit of a vertical line like so. And as I'm moving this rectangle, I'm pressing the shift key on my keyboard just so it only moves in one direction. Again, if I select this, if I press the shift key on my keyboard, I can, I'm sorry, I first have to mm, start moving actually. Like so, and I've, if I press the shift key on my keyboard, I'm only moving this in one direction. So I will move it like so. And when I'm happy with the shape, which will be done in a minute, I can select all three by dragging this selection rectangle and in the in this pane, which is called the modify pane, I will select, I want to subtract the two big rectangles from the smaller one, like so. And immediately I get the shape which I'm looking for. So what I will do, 
I will set the fill color to white for now and what I would like to do next is make sure that there is a hole in the paper when I can put in the ribbon or whatever I choose to. So I will draw a circle like so in some size and I will select both and make sure that they are properly aligned. That means that in the vertical direction they are aligned to the center like so. And again in the modify panel I will select subtract to make the hole inside the shape. If I move it over the gray background it's a little bit more visible that there is a hole in there. Maybe what I can do here is I can open the page setup dialog and for the grid I can just make the background color a little bit darker like so, so I can see it a little bit better. Okay, this is much better. So now I will move it to the left side and tap and zoom in a little bit more and select one of those drawings from the left side. So maybe I will start with, I don't know, maybe this gift should work as fine. So I will move it over our but uh, over our shape, but as you can see it's below, so I have to right click and select bring to front. And I can probably make it just a little bit bigger, so I will select the transformation pane and for the scaling I will scale it to maybe like 120% like so. Move it to the right spot and then I want to add a few lines of text. If I open my previous creation you can see I have included a gift for then the dotted line and of course from cute and glued. So I will do the same here. I will open the text tool and I will just click here and select a gift or I mean not select but type in a gift for select the selection tool click this again set the outline to no outline and fill. I will actually not set this to black color but I will try to select the color from the from the drawings which is very dark brown color. So I will select the uh, eyedropper tool from here and I will try to find the dark brown color like so. For the font itself I will change this to font sensei which you can get uh, for free. I will put the link in the description and for the size I will go with maybe 14 or maybe 16, I don't know, 18. And you can see there is a typo in here, so I have to double click this and just correct it at gift for, it should be R. Okay, that's much better. Again, I can probably make this even a little bit bigger, but you can play with the size, the font, the you know, layout for as long as you want. I will try to keep this short so I will not make too much adjustments, but just those few. And as I'm making small adjustments for the position, I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard you know, the up, left, top and down to make some position changes. As for the next step I will draw a dotted line. So I will draw a single line with the shift key being pressed so just it's a straight line or it snaps to 45 degrees angle. And again I will set the same brown color for the outline. I will increase the point size to maybe one point and for the type of the, of the line I will select this dotted one. Actually I can increase the size, the width of the line to maybe like two points to make it more visible. Then I will duplicate this text, so press the Alt key on the keyboard and move it down here. And of course I will change this from cute and glued. And change the font size to something much smaller, maybe 12 this time. Will work. Okay, so let me just make a few adjustments to the positions of the individual elements so I can have more space for the actual name for the person who will be receiving this gift, like so. And I'm happy with the layout. So this probably could be one of those tags which we can use. So let's try to play with the background a little bit. So for this I will select all the elements. So select the selection tool, draw a selection rectangle over all the elements and again I will press the Alt key on my keyboard and move everything down, like so. And for the background color I can select the background shape and maybe we can come up with a nice little pattern. So I will open the fill properties which is this small palette and I will change this to fill pattern. And there should be one of those patterns which is already a nice pink color which is this one, a pink dotted background but it feels like that the text is a little bit hard to read. 
So what I can do is I can try to duplicate this shape one more time. So I select the shape, press the Ctrl C and Ctrl F on the keyboard. And as you can see in this menu, Ctrl F means paste in front. So I will paste it in the very same position in front of everything else. Then I will select both shapes by drawing the selection rectangle. Right click and select a send to back. And what happens is now we have two different shapes for the background. They, right now they are both using the very same fill, but we will click on the first one and set the fill back to white color, which means you cannot see anything. But now what I can do is I can try to play with the transparency and just fade in between the pure white and pure pattern on the background. So what I will do is I will try to find some something in between just so the dots are a little bit visible, but they are not blocking our way for the text and the image. And maybe I can do one more version. So I can select again, select everything and duplicate it by dragging it with the Alt key being pressed. And for some unknown reason, sometimes the things jump around in the Z direction. So what I can do is I can select both shapes and select right click and select send to back. This one should be all the way to the back. And for the top background layer, I can change the fill color not to white, but to the pink one like so which will again give us a little bit different result. Obviously, we would want to change the images to not use the same image over and over, but I can maybe use, I don't know, maybe the snowman like so. Maybe I can again resize it to 120% like so. And maybe I can use, I don't know, whatever this, this small cookie man. It's nice. Okay. I mean, you can play play with this a lot longer than I do because I don't want to make this video terribly long. So let's say I'm happy with the result. So what would, we, what would be the next step? If I jump to the send pane, you can see a lot of stuff is actually ready to be cut, which is not what we want. So I will select everything and just make sure that nothing is cut for now. And I will wait a moment until the right side will update. And I will select, I don't want to cut anything. The only thing I want to cut is this outer shape of text together with the whole inside. If I zoom in a little bit more, I don't want to move anything. So let's undo this and select the pen tool and move this around. I only want this outer shape together with the hole to be cut, so I can select this one and select cut, and it will be perfectly fine for the white background. But for example, for this pink one, if I select the same thing and then I select cut, if it if there is a little bit of misalignment, and uh, you know very very small misalignment, it's possible that the edges wouldn't be pink, but they would be white because the background color, even when it's set to pink, in the preview, this pink color will not be printed, so it will be white. This will be white paper. So once I print it, if it will be a little bit misaligned, there could be a white edge around the cut it borders. So one way how to solve this is to make sure that the color goes outside of the actual cut area. And we can do this in a few a few ways. Probably easiest way would be to make sure that the cut area or the cut line is just a little bit smaller than the actual tag. So let me jump to the send pane. And for now, set all the shapes to be no cut. So we don't want to cut anything from here. We want to create a new cut lines, which will be just a little bit smaller than the text itself. So for this, I will select those three background shapes. So let me select all of those and select copy. I mean, control C and paste control V on the keyboard. And let me move those a little bit to the side so we can see what we are doing. I will select all of those, all three of those and set the fill to no fill. And for the color, we can probably set it to some color, which is not being used anywhere else. So maybe this violet one. And what I will do is I will jump to the offset pane. So offset panel and select the internal offset. And we can really make this a really, really small value. So one millimeter or a fraction of an inch would be perfectly fine. I will hit apply. And then I will sh make sure that those outer lines are deleted. So what I will do is I will select those outer paths one by one and just delete those like so. Now I can move those back to the position. And again, um, I can use arrow keys on my keyboard to make sure everything is aligned. Of course, I can zoom out, zoom in a little bit more to see that I'm moving 
the stuff in the right spot, like so, but it seems like everything is fine and perfectly aligned. So I can zoom out and now I can finally set the cut paths. So I will jump to the sand pane and in here still nothing is being selected to be cut. But since we have so many shapes, probably the best case would be to not set the action by simple, but now I will set the action by line, which will set the action by line color. And I can control based on the line color what I want to cut and what not. And the, probably the only thing I want to cut are those lines which are in the purple or, or uh, violet color. If I zoom in, you can see that's the case. We will be cutting those lines which are slightly smaller than the color area. So even if there is a little bit of misalignment, everything will be just fine. So the last thing which needs to be done is to make sure that the cut settings is right. So I will most likely set this to cardstock plane. And that all of course depends on the paper type. You would have to use or you would have to make a few test cuts to make sure that the setting for the depth, speed and the force and number of passes is right. And I'm using the first tool which is set to auto blade, which will most likely be the case of yours if you are using Silhouette Cameo 3 or 4. And that's it. So the action right now would be to select file print and print this paper on your on your printer, then feed this back into your silhouette cutter keep this on the same page and just let send and it will be cut for you automatically and hopefully it will work just fine and so that's that's it that's how you used my how you use my digital download silhouette studio file from my etsy shop uh, cute and glued .etsy.com and create something new and cute looking thank you for watching if you have any questions please feel free to put those in your comments and i hope to see you next time thanks for watching Bye.